three dot five small minutes since it dropped it this Tuesday morning in Ibiakura in Uran local government area, which is in the heart of Akwaibum in the deep south of Nigeria on the west coast of Africa. My name is Michael Bush, my colleagues on the program, my senior colleague number one, Francis Edeb, right here, and of course. Ime Emmanuel, three of us, we are on to the next stanza of the program, and we're joined by another special Akwaibom man. And this man first, um, if you like, busts into Akwaibom state consciousness as a labor leader. He was the state chairman of NLC. In those days, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say some things, but he was the state chairman of NLC when he should have been the state chairman of NLC. And I remember this man every time, and I love him because he single-handed brought uh, Adam Sushomole, comrade Adam Sushomole, who was then the, the, is that national chairman, is that how they call it, at NLC? No, national president. president. Yes, he was the president of NLC. He brought him to Akwaibom and handed him over to me. It was supposed to be a one-hour program. We ended up doing three hours on live television. I can never forget that experience. And then, from there, he would become a member of the State Executive Council, and then he would go to the House of Assembly and was there for all of three terms, even rising. At some point, to the position of uh, deputy speaker and then I think house leader. Right now, he's political leader of his home local government area of Orona and doubles as honorary special advisor on political matters for a senatorial district at Kwaibum Northeast to Governor Moino. Help me welcome to the program this Tuesday morning the right honorable Atue Kongsa Udo Kiria Akba. My political leader, very nice. You know how much I love you. It's very nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank Welcome. You. Welcome. So there's uh, Francis, there's uh, Ime, and that this morning we've come very here. Very clean. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank we've you come so. here to discuss Governor Umoino's first 12 months, especially vis-a-vis -vis the political impact, the impact of that administration of um, this term, of this number of months on your senatorial district. First, though, how is your... Family, how is everything around you? No, we are very good. Thank you so much, uh, Bush. My, my thing, I, I have a little uh, problem with you. Uh, every time I see you, you, you keep looking younger and younger. And, but you're, you're more than a grandfather. So what is the secret? The secret is I listen to Bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so that's just the secret. You know, because this is how you were when you were labor leader. This is how you were when you were in the Senate Executive Council. Even in your time, you did another thing and gave me an award, for something the most productive, something about productivity in Aquaibo. I can never forget you. You have all you know, always tactically. Uh, yes. yes, I remember. I remember. I won a productivity medal award every month. Yes, yes. And you deserve it that time. Thank you. Thank you. You work so hard. Even thank now, you, you deserve it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Francis, you heard that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. may you have heard. I, I, I'm yes. a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, politically speaking, uh, you are now, apart from being political leader of your home local government area of Oronam, you are Governor Moinos, uh, Governor Moinos, uh, Honorary Special Advisor on Political Matters for your Senatorial District. How did that come to you? How, how do you operate in that office? Well, I, like, I, like, I don't like using the word political leader because um, I have not been formally presented as such. Uh, the last political leader we had in Rwanda is uh, Chief uh, Itabo Pekarika, who just passed on some few months mm. ago. And then the local government has not made to say this is that or that. Okay. But, but I know I play a role mm. as um, one of the most um, uh, significant leaders in the local government. Um, trying to ensure that our party is well positioned. Mm. We also play a role to make sure that governance is good and then we take people along and ensure that our local government is safe anywhere we are. So I'm talking about um, the government of my boss, Pastor Omar Basena. Uh, I think as we go in, uh, when you are very specific on the issues, mm. uh, we we'll begin to uh, tell you what we know about the government. But I believe that so far, so good and quite good. Everybody is happy that Mono came into office in 2023. It is that humility and modesty for me, you know, um, saying that, uh, yes, I've not been formally, yes, it's true, but uh, we know, um, you know, we journalists, we are like prophets, we, we, we see what is going to be and we accept it, you know, as what is going to be. Ime? 
Then you write that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. I, I want to. I'm, I'm once again welcome, honey. But I want to ask, what has been your 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 job as the you know special advisor to the governor since you became your office? What is your? Can you just give us a detailed description of what your job looks like? Okay. You see, uh, not only being special advisor, but in political matters, mm. in the mm. yeah. mm. yeah. yeah. All senatorial that, that, that is huge. Yeah. Yes, that is huge because um, the first thing we have to do is to interpret the vision of the governor on political matters and be able to pass on to the people we speaking or uh, representing in the rural area and try to also let them know what the government is doing at every point in time for them to appreciate. Um, so far, what the programs and policies are, and also try to take from the people uh, what they desire, what they need, the aspirations back to the government for processing in the short term, in the middle term, and the, and the long term. So you know that for you to cover all that and then um, get the people to buy in and be happy is a very huge task. Yes. But so far, so good. Um, I one I think I enjoy about working with the governor is that is he has given me access. Enough access that it doesn't, um, anything doesn't stay on my table for long uh, because all the things that he needs to hear, he needs to see, he needs to do, we process it and give to him. And he has in, done it in such a way that once you put a thing on his table, he will ensure that it gets out the next day, mm. either in terms of full implementation or processing in such that it can be done in, in a near possible bit. You know, most of the issues the people are looking for. Is the programs, projects in their areas, and the governor has so far done the, even the ones people have not asked for, mm -hmm. he has done them. I think believe as we go in uh, to the program, begin to look at them one after the other. But so far, my duty is to interpret the vision and dream, pass on to the people of my central district, ensure that they buy into it, and take back from them and give to him what they need so that he can process and put as, as it goes on in, in his home. So, so far, so good. Have they been able to buy into the past MD, you know? These projects have they been able to? What's the perception of your people of your people of um, Pastor Moino? You know, I, I believe that in Akwaibon today, there is no segment of the society that doesn't applaud for Moino as a government mm. uh, because um, I don't believe that people expected him to do what he's doing. And most of his programs are local based. Okay. He's trying to reach out to people in the communities so in a such a manner that people appreciate the fact that there is a government. Mm. Um, you can talk about uh, even the food, the food program. The food program is one program that has eaten to all the villages. There is no village that has not gotten a voucher to go and take food for those people who are not able to afford on the supermarket or open market at the price that the people cannot afford. Mm -hmm. But you know the governor had a point. He wanted to uh, do a 50-50 program, but uh, he said, no, let me give to them free. As we talk to you now, all those food vouchers are giving free to people and they are taking it on their own. Apart from that, People like to see government presence in their community. There's no local government today, today, that doesn't have a government project going on. There's none. Either in the area of education, if you see the model he has planted in CK, CK, CKC, uh, you know that the government has a vision on how to turn the vision around in, in a quiet state. So there's no local government that doesn't have that model planted in the local government so far. And when you see those buildings that has to do with ICT, uh, sports, recreation, um, library, a uh, good school environment, good chalkboard. The, the, those we call the blackboard. Mm. Uh, good chalkboard and um, facilities that have never been there before, including the issue of asking head teachers and other teachers to live in the school. It has never been as good as that in that sector. You know, before today, um, other government did well too. Go renovate the classroom, make sure they are good looking, push seats, put chairs and all that. But yes, added something to it to make sure that even as we start, to prepare children for tomorrow, there's ICT. Mm -hmm. You can know how to touch a, 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 a tab board. You know how to look at it and uh, interpret what and what and what are there. So that even as you move to secondary school, you're already away of what's going on. Those things are what is, is happening in the Western world, in the Europe, Asia, America, and the rest. But today, it's bringing that closer to us so you can begin to compete with other people when we go. And the area of health, you also know. Take the example of what is happening in EBC Gossetan. That is a replica of what they're doing in many local governments that ensure that they wanted and health facility. Even markets, there are people look on also before markets and they clean up the markets and make it market that people can go and buy something and come up with that they are, they are should be being dirty. It is it is something marvelous and I believe that what the governor needs now is just for us to pray for him, 
support his inspiration, vision, and ensure that he knows that he has people backing him in, in all his doing. Okay, okay. So Francis. Let, let, let me come to you at this point, Honorable. It's, it's good to have you um, join us live here this morning. Uh, I'd like to take your I'm mind. I'm sorry back. about the roads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really apologize about Even though he still wants to apologize to us. Yes, he should be the one. He yeah. should be the one. To do what? To apologize to us. You've saved us. He said we're coming here. You're in the government, sir. And that takes you to the question. Orugonam. Your name has been on for the longest time. I think the very first time... Your name I... has been on Man and Boy. Yes. For a long time. For a long time. Uh, the first friend I had from Morogana was way back 2007. And I kept hearing Saudok Kirian, mm. Saudok Kirian. And till today, we're still hearing Saudok Kirian. Oh, and you, you keep hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Within the government. So um, what would you say has been your strength and how have you been able to stay That's a good question. relevant yeah. throughout all of this That's a great years. question. I, I think it's important for us to talk about Pastor Omar Basino in this program. No, but let's know who is no, going just, to talk just about. Just a little. Let's, let's know who is going to talk about Pastor Omar Basino. And leave with Dr. Ben Houghton. No, let's no, know. Just who. a little. <laughs> honor, but I, I have a reason for asking that when question. When I was invited, I was told that I'm going to <laughs> talk about the programs of government, not that about myself. Mm. I know. I, I would like, like the pastor would say, I would like to decrease mm. for mm. the governor to increase in this program. Okay. Maybe I'll have No, but who is making the governor increase? Uh, let's know that man that is decreasing, you know, so that we can make progress. That, you already mentioned my name. That's, yes. this is Dr. Ben you already mentioned that I was a labor leader, uh, very true, 1998 to 2007. You've mentioned that I was special advisor, very true, 2007-2010, when I resigned to conduct election uh, to the House of Assembly. You mentioned I went to the House of Assembly three times. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So that's the Dr. Ben I mentioned where we are now. <laughs> Okay, Francis. Can you get back to the governor? Who All right. Let, let, from the city today? Let's go back to His Excellency Governor Pastor Umwano. You are. You know, he's actually old. setting the agenda. You are following it. Yes. yes. Uh, he can also no, no agenda problem. for us. I, I just want to honor him for honoring us this morning. But honor, okay, because I'm he took the road. Yes, he when, took the road. When Michael Bush invited me, he said, "I'm going to talk about." The impact <laughs> of government in, in this Absolutely. Industry. Yes. Yeah. And we are dragging you down to that impact. We are dragging you to that impact. So. Laws in Accra Ibom State. So far, we've seen a couple of them coming from His Excellency Governor Pastor Omo as executive bills. How would you rate some of the things that have come from him in terms of laws to help guide the activities in Accra Ibom State? Anytime you see a law coming from executive to the House of Assembly for enactment, you know that uh, the the person sending you, the governor or the president, has thought through the program and is satisfied that it's going to help him drive his administration. So for Pastor Mobile you know, those laws, those bills he has sent to the House of Assembly are a product of deep thoughts of what he wants to achieve in those in those areas. So I can say certainly that it doesn't come every day. You don't see executive bills in the house every month. You cannot even see it once in a quarter. But anytime the governor sends a bill to the House of Assembly for an army, no, there's something he has thought about for a long time, mm -hmm. believes in the program and wants it done as part of the achievement of the administration. So so far. Those be are sent are the bills, I believe, is going to help according to Are you worried about um, being described, I mean, the State House of Assembly being described as rubber stamp? Because uh, at every point in time, His Excellency Governor Pastor Moana sends a bill, it is speedily attended, um, attended yeah, to, so. you know, and then yeah. sent back for the governor's um, signature and accent. And there... Okay, by the way, okay, they just showed him when he was in the... Okay, he's still in the, he's house, still of in the house of Assembly. Wow, so, they showed him with this same cap, I, I, <laughs> the first picture. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, uh, are you not worried about the perception of you and your colleagues at the State House of Assembly? No, that's when he was in the House when of Assembly. When you were in the State House of mm. Assembly, or your colleagues now? Mm. Uh, Francis, uh, any time you hear that word being used, um, a person using it intends to derogate the... The, the chamber, the rubber stamp. Mm. Uh, in my time as a member of the house, it was used, and my answer was, I would like to rubber stamp for this good. Mm. If rubber stamping good root is my name, I would like to rubber stamp it. If rubber stamping education in a good manner is what I have to do, I'll do it. If the rubber stamp health facility in Akwai, I have to do it. Because what is the issue? We will not send it to go and fight with the government. It was to go and collaborate and work together to ensure that what we call dividends of democracy is achieved by the people of the state. 
So if the House of Assembly is working conjunctively and in concern with what the people want and they call the rubber stand, know that that person is from another position. He's not, he's not somebody who wants to promote the government of the day. What is the issue of rubber stamp? Is it rubber stamping the free medical education the government is doing? Rubber stamping the free health services? Is it rubber stamping the um, uh, free school fees for people in primary and secondary schools? Is it rubber stamping YA fees? I mean, uh, we should be specific on, on the issue. Anything that is sent to the House of Assembly is for a purpose, and the purpose members will interpret, know they want to adjust if they are adjustable, know they want to reject, and know they want to, to, pull, to pass. So rubber stamp is not a language I like to hear because I heard it when I was in the house, and it was not a good language to me. Okay, Let, let's make progress and back to your senatorial district, Akwaibom Northeast. In the last 12 months, um, Saudokiri and Akban uh, to a of his people, right honorable, because he spent so, so many years um, political office elected. In the last 12 months, uh, what are the subheads of impact? In what areas can you count? Can you point out and say this is uh, where the governor has brought impact to my senatorial district? I started by saying that there's no low government in Aquarium now that the government project is not going on. So you want to limit my, my central district. I can also repeat that there is no local government in our central district today that one government project or the other is not going on. We can name them. It can be a health center that is modeled to work stand, work class standard. Mm. It can be a primary school that is modeled to work class standard. Even the type you see, the government commission CKC is even my local government is going on now at the Caribbean. We choose that side because. Um, is the headquarters of the government. We want people to see that something good is happening in the in the state, and it's there in the local government. You can see uh, roads going on, like my local government. You know there are roads the immediate past government uh, mm. did, but couldn't finish it. So the government is putting money for those roads to be completed. It is like that in every other local government in acquiring state. What specific but thing it, is happening in urban um, uh, Oburukara? I think that's the smallest. Uh, but the, if you want to count the broker, then, then you allow others to begin to say the governor lost the broker. Oh. <laughs> because we have, in just one year, we've gone there three times. Oh. The commission projects. The last one, I think two weeks ago, we went to from a commission, a bridge project. We went the other day to uh, governor to initiate the second road project that the people have been crying over here. If you go to that side, you cry. But the governor has started the road and he's saying that he wants to complete it in 24 months, which is between now and the next, the next two years, the road will be completed. The other time we went to come, uh, inaugurate a, a road project also in uh, Oborokara. So we went to Oborokara three times. And the massive thing the governor did in this last one we went is that as he was in the prime school for the commission of the bridge, the, the people in the school did something wonderful. They sound for the governor, they are happy, they, they shield happiness, even when the governor did not go to their school. And the governor decided to uh, give all the things they needed mm. without the asking. He gave them a brand new school, with the ICT, with a library, even a school bus. Wow. Even a school bus. So I don't want to mention about the governor because mm. they, <laughs> they are in a lucky set of people mm. in this administration. Mm. But that is exactly what is going on in many other places in, in the state. Not only my central district, but all the other central districts in, in our private state. So every local government has a project going on today. And when the project are completed and commissioned, it's going to be very massive. The one that touches my heart so much is the, the homes for the less privileged. Mm. The one the government calls um, um, the, home, the home for the uh, elderly, the elderly yes. the people that don't have anybody at all. Mm. This being built across the low government. In my low government, is we have been completed, and um, the governor announced that he has awarded contract for the construction more, and so that he can have 400 in his first term uh, as as a project for the elderly. So those projects are going on. And for me, when you see the quality of houses those women were living in, you marvel where they sleep. Mm, they sleep. At night. Mm. It's something we must celebrate because, like the governor said, if you were to build all those houses in one location and go for commissioning, mm. you see that people will say, Oh, wow, the mm. governor has done so well. But until you go around to see what is going on in every place, you now say that it is one of the areas he has touched the right people 
in such a way that even God himself is very happy with him. Very good. Um, I'll ask two more questions, gentlemen, and then um, Francis will take it away and it continues like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, the right Honorable Atulikon, Sir Udoki Renapan, what is the political impact of the last 12 months of uh, Governor Moino on your senatorial district? Yeah, um, I, I think you are reframing it again. Yeah, are your people uh, happy politically? Politically. I, I see, I, see I, I, I keep saying that there is no person, now, even the opposition, even the opposition political parties, they are very happy with Pastor Moino because they never thought that he's going to do what he's doing. He's going to impact on the people the way he's impacting. All the programs he has initiated and some completed programs, people did not believe he would do. Is in terms of rules. You know that there's, there are not many governments in Nigeria that can initiate a road in one month mm. and complete it. This is the magic person or shield when he completed that behind the market road. Don't forget, that was the very first road he committed, he commissioned in the life of his administration. He had done so in all the central districts. Do it, commission it. That's one impact. Is it in the area of education I just mentioned? Go to CKC. The other day we CKS and see mm. what, what has been done. Is something a government could have completed in one year, but he made sure he's completed in one year and duplicated them in all the low government areas in the state. Is in the area of agriculture. This is a governor that decided to ensure that the Ministry of Agriculture is very active every day, every other day. Is that they donate stems to people to, to use? Is that they teach them how to how to plant? Is that they educate them what to do? Is and the governor went on to say even schools must have farms. This I think we did in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. But it's bringing about those things to make sure the quality of life in those areas and put that. Because once you have from the table, you can be sure that everything can move very, very easily. So those are great impacts. And the issue of making sure that there is food on the table for the ordinary person, the food vouchers introduced through the board purchase agency. These are things that are done to ensure that even the people who couldn't afford it, afford it without paying a dime. So these are impacts that are going on. The children in secondary school don't pay their wife fees. The government pays it for them. These are things that are done to ensure that they take the load of the heads of their parents. People in, in primary school don't pay school fees at all. In primary school, the same thing. These are being purchased every other day. Go to uh, Sube. The other day, I was when the, when the chairman of Sube was sending school desk to the primary and junior secondary schools. Even the issue of books. Just recently, just recently, the government other that books, slippers, uniforms, and all that are given to children in schools. So it's ongoing, and those things are being done. Commissioner Education is busy every day trying to run, go around schools to distribute those things. Like the books, those things were not done in the past. Even if we were done, it was just a drop in the ocean. But now he's picking it up in a massive manner to ensure that many people have the benefits of what government is, is doing. Just yesterday, the former governor and the present governor commissioned a massive book project. How else would describe that atmosphere? Of joy, seeing truly I come together, commission a road that both of them joined the uh, God initiated and, 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 and finished. This is one of the things lacking other places. We are very much lucky to have people who are determined to make input and make impact in their society as they are in office. So, Bush, I think this government has done well. The government before did so well also. And we are lucky as a state to have a leaders who come and go and leave impact in the sense of time. Okay. Great. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I still will push a little more. I'm wondering this time now about uh, still politics. Um, this governor has tended to be different from, you know, if you like, uh, an alarming majority of Nigerian politicians, Nigerian public office holders, Nigerian governors, by being, if you like, too inclusive. He goes to the opposition political parties. In fact, he treats them even better than he treats PDP members. And that's the one that I wanted to know. Is that a problem in your senatorial district? For instance, what, what does your senatorial district, what do P politicians like you of PDP in your senatorial district think of the, the, um, the presence of a Senate president you know, from another political party, minister from another political party? Is Governor Moeno helping PDP in your senatorial district? Obviously, um, the desire or the vision of the governor to operate an inclusive government is something everybody is clapping uh, for because, like the governor has been saying, it is important we lower the temperature of politics in the state and allow development to be discussed and appreciated. 
so far, um, as you saw, the Senate president came into a quiet room. You see that he went to pay a call on, on the government. Uh, those things are signs that the two leaders are willing to work together. And they are showing us example to follow. There is no issue of treating uh, other political parties better than us. A quiet room is a lucky state that you have a governor who is willing and able to bring people together. You also have a Senate president who is willing and able to come together and say, I want to work with my brother as a governor and make the state better. Those are things that people don't want to see if they want to play politics. Because it is better for some people to create empire for themselves, cause confusion, make sure they say they heated up for them to be the one benefiting. And all of them, those that do those kind of things, doesn't stay in the state. Once they cause the confusion, they go out of the state and stay somewhere else and ask people to come over there and, and they, they insinuate fan embers of disunity and all that. But these two leaders have decided to come together and ensure that the Kwebun state is better off for it, preach the gospel of peace, ensure that they move together, talk to themselves, ask people that are close to them to also copy and do and do. That has made sure that the Kwebun state as of today does not have the issue of why did you go to see Mr. A? Why did you go to see Mr. B? And, and all that. So for me, and again, when you notice that the governor has taken that to a national level, um, just some, some few weeks ago, he came to preach that he went to see the president, asked for some projects, and the president has agreed to do that. It is not ordinary that it happened that, that way in two different political parties. So it is something to celebrate. When the issue of reception of the president of the Senate came, you saw the governor was a city from beginning to the end. The minister was seated. Everybody was laughing, shaking, and mm. it, in fact, this is the first time that has happened mm. in in this part of of, of um, the country. Uh, the country. So I believe that other states are copying. And even yesterday, um, when the middle class governor uh, came to the state and was talking his friend and um, a successor, uh, people were saying, "Yeah, this is something worth copying." The Emma of um, uh, Nasawa was there. He was looking at it with amazement uh, that uh, this is what is going on in the state. So this is the issue that's going on, and you can say that because of that, the atmosphere of love, atmosphere of unity, atmosphere of respect, cooperation has returned to the state in a manner that every other person is happy that the two people are working, are working together. So for me, it's going to ensure that we get more, more at, from the center and more from the state. Fantastic. Um, Francis and Dime, it's uh, half past the hour in Ibiakuran in Uran local government area of Akwaibom states. And Francis, we fire the next question. First, let's just quickly say that uh, the phone number, uh, Francis will be giving the phone numbers to, the phone number, there's just one number, to the radio audience any moment now. And then um, the TV audience is already there for you on your screen. First, though, Francis, can we go to Lagos to take um, two minutes from Dan Chris Ebie, our man in Lagos. Dan Chris, we're discussing the impact of Governor Umoino in the last 12 months on Akwaibom North East Senatorial no, District. North West, North Excuse West. me, Akwaibom North West Senatorial District, where the Right Honorable Atue Kongsa Udoki Renapan comes from. Uh, and of, of course, that is you, you come from the corner, Dan Chris ABA. That is your senatorial district. Do you agree with all that um, Saudoki Renapan has said so far? And um, yes, no. What are your shots? Shoot them now, Dan Chris ABA. Um, well, um, thank you again. First and foremost, let me say this. Etareka, eh? Go from Moino, you make it fail. Etareka, go from Moino, you make it fail. Why am I saying this? Um, I'm very, very happy with the caliber of people they are surrounded themselves with, you know, I mean. Although last week we had yeah, a former House of Rep member as his, you know, advisor. And of course, today we have with the studio here, right on the Udo, It's a pleasure, sir. It's a pleasure to, you know, with the wealth of experience that you have, that the government will be fit to bring you place to the table. Thank um, you. Yes, let me take off from the question. You cover my senatorial district, and I think I will use this opportunity to say, please, my village is Okwe, in the corner, just after I can it, right? Between Uduato and um, the markets, um, Adelupu, we don't have roads. It's that road has, has not been 
and those that are tended to for ages. And it's a commercial road, you know, between Udwato, Abiyako, Ibarachi, you know, all the way to Ekodele, to Adenepo. Please, sir, you are in the office. And this is this area is uh, where you cover. Yeah, I said, we have to go to my question also would be um, you are the ears of the governor and at the same time you are the ears of the people Lord, and I can see that with this uh, one year in office uh, Governor Mono is, is listening to the voice of the people and is doing that in fact, before I even go ahead to, I want to congratulate him uh, Pastor Moino in addition to the things he has done in the last one year for flagging of Ikorokone Abaro. Ikorokone Abaro is, as we speak, what is going on. It has been abandoned for years. And you know that for commercial activities to happen in Akwaibo, we need that connection between Aba and Oyo. And of course, Calabar is road. So I'm very happy. Kudos to him for making this. Um, and of course, it's because of the likes of people like you surrounding him and advising, and advising him. Thirdly, political chairman of local governments have been so popular for a very long time. And I'm also very happy and elated that our governor has been talking about accountability. Uh, now that uh, this autonomy of local government is um, it's about to be you know uh, put in place, please, it will be important that we um, manage this area, the local government chairman. Okay, I think there's an interference there. But um, if you can, okay. if you can hear me, Dan. If you can hear me, th there is something in your background. I think there's a fan that is on that is interfering with the audio. So please help turn it off before we come back to you. But we'll allow the Honorable to answer that question that yeah. you've given so far. I think you made an appeal that we should um, get the information to the governor to do Orator Road in the, in the corner because he has a business that is running and he wants the business to keep running. It's not because he has um, mentioned that. I think the government of Akwaibom today has um, decided to focus attention on the economy in the axis of the of the state to ensure that it's opened up for. Okay, you know, honourable, please hold on to that control. thing. We have a caller. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Rise and Shine. Good morning, Petrol TV. Good Welcome. Morning. Your name and where you're calling us from? Uh, this is Mike Appan calling from Uyo. Mike Appan, go ahead, Mr. Mike. I just want to say a big thank you for um, airing this program concerning the governor and the Abidjan State. Mm. Personally, I want to say I'm blessed having him as the governor of Abidjan. He has actually changed the momentum system the government is being run. What I want to address uh, is this. in the area of uh, food supply. If you go to the local market, you hardly will see that food and buy. There is a system that will be working in order to break the market union system. If there is a truck, at least one truck in each of the local government that could go to where to get this food and bring it to each of the local government so that people can go and buy, in order not to go to um, uh, get uh, what you call it. Um, uh, 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 a ticket somewhere in order to buy that food, the food price will reduce in that Bible. And in addition to that, I am using this platform to appeal to the um, state governor, uh, Pastor Moino, to kindly help us construct a bridge that is linking the air and the There is a total dichotomy in that environment. Please, I really appreciate what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing in that Bible. God bless uh, Spectrum Television. Thank you so Thank much, you. Mike. Over to you. Yeah, um, to you. Uh, uh, the request is that uh, Iman Bridge should be constructed. But I also know that um, Mike has a, a heart of appreciation because this government and even the immediate past government have done so much along Iman, Iman Aziz 
and they still doing much along in my analysis. If there is a one bridge that is having an issue and he, he would like us to recommend that to the governor, fine and good. We'll place that on the table and uh, we'll see what happens in the nearest in the nearest future. I'm um, talking about the issue of food sufficiency. I think the government has answered that question many times by saying that uh, yes, in the short run, major intervention can be done and is done. Interventions of um, um, setting up the bulk purchase agency and with the mandate for them to reach out to the less privileged, make food available to them at, uh, at no cost, um, ensuring that they also teach the people on how, how to go back to the farm and that the Ministry of Agriculture is doing, ensuring that the schools, primary schools are taught how to go back to the farm. And even declaring that every first and last Fridays of the month uh, uh, are declared uh, farm days for civil servants so that they can go and plant. We cannot depend on getting buses to go and bring food from outside the state and come and give to your people for, for sale. Even if the government wants to do that, it cannot last for a long time mm -hmm. because there's no way that can be sustainable. The impact is that when they will return to farm, farm in our barrier, farm in our farmlands, farm everywhere we have opportunity, then the food sufficient in our will become a thing, a thing of, of the past. But depending on bringing food from the come from Goja, the trail lorries and buses, what happens if they close the route and they say they cannot bring, bring it in again? Mm. So I think it's important that while we are looking for the short-term um, benefits or the short-term uh, strategy to get it done, we also imbibe the strategy the government has brought as a long-term strategy to make it available in all the farms, families, in all the households, and all that and all that. So going forward, we can play that role. It's not about government alone. Everybody must play that role to ensure that we help our families to have what to eat every morning after an evening. Okay, just uh, to let you know, you can still be part of this conversation. The phone number is um, 704 7707 And for the international community, that will be plus 234-704-541-7707. You can uh, definitely put a question or two across to the Honorable and who will be here to answer. But over to you, May. All right, Honorable, I want to ask a question concerning the youth and what has been your effort in bringing the gov government closer to the youth in your senatorial districts since the inception of this administration? Yeah, the youth are the owners of the government. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, if, if, you, if you follow the trend, you know that the youth are the owners of the government today. Uh, the first thing the government did is to say, it's all right, I'm... I'm I mean in your senatorial districts. Yes, yes, everywhere, everywhere. Uh, because the governor does not designate, he does not say it should happen here, it doesn't happen here. Every program he has put on the table covers every area. Mm. Like the issue of um, appointment of personal assistants, all those personal assistants are youth. There is none of them that is an elderly person that can be saved or not qualified to get that. If they are, maybe very minimal in you know, some few strategic areas. Um, outside that, the governor also say we want to do a transition committee to pave way for us to have time to conduct work on election. Most of those people appointed in all the wars are youth. It didn't stop there. Even the people that are manning the wards, the wards in our party, are youth. Elders only play advisory, advisory, advisory role. Most of these programs that he bombed, the training of um, the 800 youths to, to have what to do, they're all youth. 800 of them, out of that, um, 500,000 giving out to each of them, 400 million naira. All of them are used. All the intervention program the government is doing is focused on the youth. And just recently, the government announced in one of the programs we went that all those female youth that were following us around must be trained and given what to do. Because in this in this world, you were with us when we were going around for campaigns. You work with us everywhere. Now the time has come for us to also look at you and empower you. And he directed that each of the groups be given a hundred slots to produce for those to be trained, mm -hmm. the female youth. And so far, the training documentation is ongoing, and in a few weeks from now, they will, they will start the program. After their training, they will be empowered with Naira and cover for them to start their business. And the government went further to say, their own is going to be different, because some of them do not have shops, so I'm going to add 250,000 Naira for each of them to go and get a shop to be able to start the program. So those are programs for the youth. Even the farm program, 
he has also directed that the Minister of Agriculture should ensure that it focuses on the youth so that all of them who are leaving school can return to the farm and have what to, what to do. All these companies working in Akwaibon, the Hensek, um, the CCCC, all the companies are employing youth. So we have opened up the space for them to be employed, particularly those that have the skills to have what to do. Three days ago, we went to commission the housing program in um, Ibionibo and Itu. Ibionibo and Itu. Yes. And the governor told them clearly, this program is for you people. If you have a skill, go there and, and, get, and get something to do, to do. But if you don't have a skill, whatever is available, do that one, but don't go and cause, cause trouble. So as we are trying to package the youth to have something, we also have the youth to do that. They have to use their hand to do something. The local government chairman in the state, 80% of them are youth. So I can say clearly that even this government is focusing more on the youth than the others. No, and for me, it's their time to, to get that done because it is their turn to ensure that most of the benefits of governance is on their table so they can grow from there. I'm going to ask you my second question. You've been in government for some time. I mean, you've seen previous administration. Now, what are the challenges you face working with Governor Omoino? With a, 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 a different, what are the challenges you face so far working with Governor Omoino, being in government for over some time? No, whoever feels uh, I have a challenge working with the governor does not know what to do. Mm. Because you are not the honor of the government. Mm. The governor is a visionary. Okay. He's only got his vision to interpret. So you know what you're asked to do. You don't go and create trouble in somebody's government. In you other words, it has been smooth there's, working there's with him. Smooth, very smooth. Because you are given direction on what to do, and you do that. The only thing you can do for that is to advise on areas you feel can be done in the private. And let it be taken into the pool and, and processed. You are not the governor of government. You are not going to say this must be done, this must be done. If you say that, that means you want to become a second governor mm. and the entire governor that has been elected. So I don't have any challenge working with him because I read this program, I see the area is going, I follow him in that area and ensure that I interpret exactly what he wants us to do and go about and get, and get that done. If there are challenges, I go back to him and we discuss it and he gave me a further approval on what to do. And I go and do that. That's all. Okay. No challenge at all. All right, looking at our time, it's a quarter to nine, and um, we just go back to Lagos and give Dan Chris some two, three more minutes to wrap up with his questions. Dan Chris, good to have you back. All right. I'm going to now. I'm sure you can hear me. Um, yes, yes, we can hear you clearly. Uh, quickly, let me just follow up on uh, Emil's question. I'll be Okay, okay, okay. Um, you talk about challenges with, um, I, I, you know, you just asked the question, what are the challenges that our governor is facing, you know, currently? And I will just quickly ask, I said there are some talks in the air and in some certain quarters that our governor is still being, um, uh, you know, I'm twisted by some godfathers or God, you know, godfather or godfathers. I mean, I mean, how true, <laughs> how true is this? Because you're the one who has to say this. You know, um, what do you have to say to this? Mike, Mike, why are you laughing when you're asking the question? <laughs> <laughs> and you don't answer again. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the governor has answered this question time and time again to say that he has not been pressurized by anybody, not even of former governors, to do what he wants to in the state. That he has a free hand to operate. So whoever is uh, insinuating that there is a godfather somewhere doing this and that, he's only talking to himself. Uh, because um, the, the population of Kwaibon understands that there is no pressure from anywhere uh, against uh, the governor to operate what he's operating. Okay, uh, we'll we just have to come back. Um, Dan Chris uh, ABA in Lagos, many, many thanks. Uh, we, we're looking to go to Wisconsin in the United States. I don't know. We, is, is um, a noble moiety on the line? Okay, so we're waiting for a noble moment. We hope he's able to come in within the next 10 minutes before we say a bye bye on this edition of the program. We're still enjoying the special edition of this flagship program of TAF Media Group, and that is Rise and Shine. It's on Spectrum TV right now, also on Planet 101.1 FM, and the right honorable at two accounts, Saud Okiri and Akban. As our studio guest is the honorary special advisor to Governor Moino on political matters for Akwaibum Northeast Senatorial District. Thank you for, for staying with us. Thank you.
are there things about Akwaibom people that you don't like? Are there things they are doing to this governor? Are there things you think it's because the Akwaibom, our people are behaving like this, especially people in the senatorial district, that's what is slowing the governor down that you want us to change? No, not at all. The only thing I will say is that um, we are not um, we are not doing the PR job for the governor enough. This governor has done so much with so much so little publicity from the people. I'm not talking about government publicity. Mm. Talking about people on their own, speaking out from locations they are to say, yes, this government has done, and particularly on areas where the projects are, are, are being um, in, um, initiated and uh, executed. Those people should speak out and thank the governor for bringing those quality projects to their communities. They should speak out and own the projects. One thing is to speak out, the other thing is to own the project themselves. Because like the governor keeps saying, I can't be investing in a project today and tomorrow people finalize it mm -hmm. and you ask me to come back to that location. This is one thing we must do as a people to make sure that the government is happy that they did something in our locality. For me, that's one thing we must preach. And if that is done, you will see more projects being executed in many other areas without going back to that same location to do the same thing. I, I want to follow a um, Bush question. You said the people are not, you know, doing the PR enough. What, if, what of some people that feels, I mean, I voted him and that is his duty. What, of, what, what? Of, there's some people that believes that is what is being. That was why you voted him into the office. I mean, that is his job. Don't you feel that there are some people that that believes that way that that is the job of the governor? It's supposed to be meeting the needs. It's supposed to be giving us dividend of democracy. Do we need to go ahead and you know herald and? You know, make a whole sound of it. Don't there are some people like that? What listen to such people? Yeah, agreed. But also don't forget that uh, that is the, not the only location available uh, for project to be executed. The governor also has a right to go to anywhere else. So if you are lucky to be, you can't go anywhere outside the state. Submit this inside. I'm talking issues. about those areas that project have been. Located. No, I'm talking about the whole state. Uh, yeah, sure. Is the owner of the whole state, the mm -hmm. father of the entire state. So he has no reason to lament about people thanking him or not, but I'm the one saying this, okay. Okay, that we have a duty to thank him for what he has done. Even God, even God said, I, sure, I did this for you and you didn't come to say thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we inherit that attitude of saying, for this one you have done, we are happy. Let's do it. Because if he does something wrong, all of us will shout mm -hmm. that this one he has done is not right. So when he does the one that is good, let us also shout also and say he has done the one that is that is good. In that way, we begin to see leaders begin to appreciate their people, uh, come to do more for them, and even work extra hours to make sure that the people are happy. Mm. Process. Well, um, in, in the spirit of gratitude and talking about gratitude, I know that um, successive administration, it seems like the Aquabon people will rather, or most times we find, not the Aquabon people, let me be specific, some persons would rather choose to pinpoint the flaws mm. rather than highlight the gains that we have. How does that affect the running of governance? No, it doesn't, it doesn't affect because uh, you cannot close somebody's mouth when they want to speak and you cannot detect what they want to say. But I know that um, a greater number of Aquarian people are grateful people mm. and they always appreciate it wherever they are. My only idea is that we should do more to ensure that the government knows that this one they have done is good. Okay. It's right, if they do something that is bad and we criticize, it will not be seen as doing politics. Okay. <laughs> now, just, just before, uh, my very, probably my last question, mm. um, the people of Aquabum State are talking about sustainability. Moino has started well. We all in Aquabum can agree to that fact. It started well. But do you have fears, like some Aquabumites would say, of his ability to sustain as we go into the next second year, the third year, and finally the last year before we talk about the next round of elections. The speed the man is using, I'm not sure that he, decide, he has decided to pull a break any time. Because if you see him speak, he speaks with passion about what he wants to do and what he's doing. And we only could to pray that money should keep coming into the state for him to do most of those things he has aligned to do. There is no part of this state that will not celebrate that they had a government in the person of Pastor Moore. Basiena, who they elected. And I believe that going forward, every community begin to say, yes, I didn't have it last year. I have a good one this year. Even those one that doesn't, that doesn't have to do, may be lucky to have better things in, in future. There's no time for break. And he knows that he's going to run for eight years. So he cannot pull a break in the middle of the game because 
people are expecting him to finish very strong, and uh, we advising him, we want him to finish very strong. So we keep pushing him to ensure that he does not forget what he promised the people. And so far, so good. I have been there when he opens his record and say, what did I promise these people, what did I do here? What? And he, he keeps knowledge of those things he said when he was campaigning. Mm -hmm. And his intention is to ensure that he fulfilled those promises in all the areas. He might even do more. So that when we come back for vote in 2027, no part of Akwai will have any reason not to come out and give him 100% vote. You know, we've got to go. We've got to do the last question. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So uh, my last question before I allow you to round off this edition of the program uh, would be about the senatorial district. Yes, today, uh, you are some senator. You're representing your senatorial district on this program. Yes, you, you say. I didn't get that idea, yeah, and so what? You are, you are a senator representing your senatorial district on this program. And I, so, when I, you get I, back I, I home. Am, I'm the hardest special advisor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because when you get back home, program. when you get back home, <laughs> yes, when you get back home, your people are going to, oh, you didn't say this, you didn't say that. So, yes, you say the governor has done well, and everyone can see, even Francis, who is very critical, agrees that the governor has done well. Even you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm wondering, are there some things still your senatorial district, Akwaibu North East, is still looking Northwest, forward Northwest. to having? Akwaibu Northwest, what is it? So, what that Akwaibu Northwest senatorial district is looking forward to having from the governor's he gets, gets into his second year? There's, there is no senatorial district that can get everything he wants to get mm. at the go in the first year. Mm. And um, you know that government is just beginning. So, my senator district definitely will have what can be said in a long lasting impact and programs and programs. Oh. And we are processing it. We will pray before the governor in a private room and we will look at it. The one that is available to be done, he does it. The one he can postpone to next, mm. uh, next, uh, mm. next uh, tenor, he postpones it. So, Absolutely. But definitely, he will cover our senator Yes. Very strong. Okay. We need to go, but there's no way we can round off um, without dashing to the United States for just two minutes before we say our bye byes. Where a man uh, in Wisconsin, in Nobong Umoite, joins us live. In Nobong, what time is it in the United States right now, where you are? Good morning, Uncle Bush. Good morning, uh, distinguished panel, the rise and shine. And uh, good morning, our distinguished guest, the Honorable Special Advisor uh, to His Excellency the Governor. It is 2.55 a.m. Uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin right now. Wisconsin. Wow. Okay, so you have uh, the political man here. This man is... Uh, do you know him, by the way? Do you know Right Honorable Atuekong Saudokiri Anakpan? You heard that name before? Well, yes, absolutely. I know him. He's a fine gentleman. I've met him in person several times at the Aquibum uh, um, Akisan Convention here in the U.S. And he's uh, a very distinguished uh, uh, you know, parliamentarian and politician. A graphic politician and a lot of people have a lot of respect for him. So we've had met him several times. And uh, yes, uh, during his visits here. Yeah. yeah, because of time and the lack of it in Norbong, let's just round off in one minute. Um, just some things that he, you want him to take home with him, P politically speaking, about Governor Umoino the last 12 months. Yes, thank you for uh, the opportunity. Um, well, uh, for the purpose of time, and what I have is just feedback. And the feedback is that um, the Excellency, the Governor, has done very well uh, to appoint this uh, distinguished um, gentleman uh, to represent that uh, district in uh, his cabinet in order to bring grassroots development. And we have seen a lot of footage and a lot of media of the activities of the Honorable uh, Lawmaker and uh, representing uh, not only that district, but uh, doing the fine work that uh, the governor, his expertise, has assigned him to do. So he is a grassroots politician. We brought that to bear. And there's a lot of feedback commenting what they're doing and what he is doing in that new office. Okay, I just want to apologize to you because of time and the lack of it. A noble moment in Wisconsin, United States of America. Tomorrow is another day. By the way, tomorrow, Senator Ekong Samson would be joining us. Until then, a noble, see ya. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Fantastic. Francis, we need to go. Uh, Ime, we need to go. Yes. And the right honorable at Tuekon, Saudo Kiranapan, honorary special advisor to Governor Moino of Akwaibom State on political matters representing Akwaibom Northwest Senatorial District. It was very nice having you. Your closing thoughts as we go home. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate what you guys are doing. Go help us. Amen. Thank you to the governor for making all the things he's doing in Akwaibo. We appreciate you. The Fantastic. People, we love you. Amen. We love you too. Francis, we got to go. Yeah, I think um, I'll let the boss lead us home. Absolutely. Yes. Amen. All right, just like <laughs> yeah, I think I'd rather let the boss lead us home. Too. Okay, yes. thank you. So on behalf of the chairman of uh, TAF Media Group, uh, Satoni Afia, who's right here in the building, we also like to thank everyone for your time and for being here with us. Um, Micah and Ubom, thank you for coming along. My name is Michael Bush. My panelists, my colleagues, uh, that is uh, Francis Dede and Ime Manuel, join me to say goodbye from Ibiakuran in Nuran local government here of Akwaibun State. Tomorrow is another day on Rise and Shine. Bye-bye.